I said that to someone at some point. Gosh, where was that? I don't know if it was on a podcast in real life or on a tweet. Right, because podcasts are not real life. <laughs> yeah, podcasts. Th- do we exist right now? <laughs> you have entered the podcast zone. I mean, Ian just wants to shed his physical form, so. I really do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on The Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Lily Beyer and Brian Mitchell, who will be sharing their experiences with the iPhone XS and XS Max. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO51. So I'm really glad that I was able to find two people who bought the new iPhones because I have not bought one at all, so I know almost nothing about them. Someday, Ian, you will buy an iPhone. I, <laughs> uh, you want to make a bet about that? That's like... Okay, but I have the success sitting here. And you, like, could possibly know someone who needs that. Who could possibly buy an iPhone secondhand. <laughs> Although, it's three years old, so I probably wouldn't make you actually pay Did I? Did I say you will buy it, or did I say you will use it? Um... I mean, I do use an iOS device on a fairly regular basis, because I've got the iPad for school. Um, yeah, it is. It is very useful when I want to do you. You know, have like a testing device for reviewing apps that are both on Android and iOS and stuff. So, yep, yep. Um, but let's talk about those new iPhones, the 10s and the 10s Max. So let's start off with pricing. So for pricing for these new iPhones, uh, they start at 9.99 for the 10s, which is a um, the smaller size, the same size as the iPhone 10 from last year, same price as well. Um, and the 10s Max starts at um, 10.99, so just a hundred dollars more for an extra. Um, I don't remember the screen difference. Larger screen, the same kind of re- resolution oh, it's, footprint. Uh, 5.8 to right. then like 6. Point... Is it 6.5? Yeah. It seems. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's huge. Great, yeah. love it. It's terrifying. Um, so it's a hundred dollars more for the more expensive one. Well, um, yeah, and they, depending on storage. Yep. Um, and then with storage, it's a hundred and no wait, it's sixty-four gigabytes for the starting ones, and then they go up another hundred and fifty dollars for the two hundred fifty-six gigabyte, and then I don't remember, maybe another hundred or more dollars for the five hundred twelve gigabyte, which I think is kind of similar to what the Note Nine has. I think they have a half terabyte model too. What's like the most that you can price these out to? Is it like four, 1450 or something like that? Um, I bought mine with a case and the 256 gig and I spent roughly 1400. Uh-huh. So add another 150 yeah. to that and that's probably the 512. Yeah. I forgot about tax until it was like on the bill. I was like, oh, it'll, you know, be $1,100. Then it was almost 1300. So. It's, it's the life. It's fun. <laughs> Join the cult, Ian. I do it. <laughs> Brother, you won't regret like, it. I literally just made the jump from like the four hundred dollar phone range to six hundred dollar phone range, and I'm so mad at Google that they like they start the Pixel phones at eight hundred dollars now. Um, I just yeah. I I don't think I can make that jump. So I'm definitely not going to be able to make the jump all the way up to a thousand. Totally fair. I think that's kind of a result of um, the pricing has been kind of flat for, um, gosh, you know, starting kind of 650. That was kind of flat for, what, five, six, seven years. And so I think it's kind of a result of that flattening, flattening out. And they're like, well, we can sell a bunch of these phones at more expensive prices, so let's do it. Um, and so I think, you know, the real, the real cost might be um, a little more money than the older iPhones, but the... You know, the, or the the cost for Apple to make them, especially with things like stainless steel band and whatnot, that does cost more money. They're definitely making more per phone than they were before. Well, yeah, and there's no longer the like buy it with a carrier and it's this much mm. cheaper. Like that's not yeah. an option. You can buy it with a carrier, but it'll be the same price. So let's uh, let's talk about the displays on these new devices. So we've got, uh, what did we say? A 5.8 inch display on the regular size 10s, and then the max has a 6.5 inch display. Yes. Um, and the, um, I think the pixel densities are the same. It's like 400 some PPI. Let me look at the tech specs. Um, so they're, they're, 
they're re- these two devices are really the same. It's just the dimensions are different. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah. they're both Super Retina HD displays. Um, they're both OLED. Um, they're Which both is HDR crucial. displays. Oh, yeah, they're, it's nice. It's got that million to one contrast ratio. Typical. Um, so the the uh, iPhone XS has the, sta- the same... 2436 by 1125 pixel resolution at five. Uh, sorry, at 458 PPI, and the iPhone XS Max has a 2688 by 1242 at the same 558 PPI. Now, um, because it's OLED, the the subpixels are arranged in like a diamond pattern with twice as many green subpixels as red or blue. So it's not quite a true, you know, resolution of that. And you can see that if you have. Is, um, that, is that like the is that the pentile arrangement or is that am I thinking of something different? Uh, that's a word that sounds familiar. I don't remember what that means. <laughs> um, but basically, there's uh, there's an image I saw floating around that is um, at the you know the native resolution of the iPhone screen and its fonts in red, green, and blue at certain fo- text sizes, and they get smaller and smaller and smaller. And at the smallest size, you can see. The green one is much sharper than the blue and the green. Sorry. The green is much sharper than the blue or the red. Okay. Yeah. So um, something to think about when thinking about the displays, especially when compared to the iPhone XR, which still has LCD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're calling it liquid retina to like make it sound better <laughs> than just LCD. Right. Right. Um, now, of course, since these are both in the same like form factor as the 10, right? They don't have the home button. They don't have touch ID. So they both have uh, face ID. Woo. Love it. Most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, and then uh, they also are continuing with wireless charging. Woohoo! Uh, and Love it. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad that Apple got on board with wireless charging because that's like that's really the only hope that I have for everybody in my house being able to like charge off of the same charging stations. Didn't Android phones start getting it and then they kind of stopped and now they're getting it again? Yep, yep, yeah. I the, think uh, it's kind of following old, what Apple's doing. Yeah, my old Nexus 5 had wireless charging available. And at some point, Google was like, well, nobody's actually using this, so we're just going to quietly take it away. Um, As with everything you like. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good quote for Google and Ian's relationship. (laughs) Oh, please, please bring back Inbox. I love it. (laughs) But uh, yeah, um, yeah, wireless charging, yay. Water resistant, Yeah, I I bought a wireless charger with my iPhone tennis max and the leather case. And it was just like, Bleh. there's another, you know, dozens of dollars on it, but I don't know. It works well. It charges seven and a half watt. It's fast. It's speedy. I don't have to think about it. Mm-hmm. I just have to listen for the, the, the tone it makes when it starts charging or the, the little uh, buzz that it makes. I have said it on there, I think twice now where it's not quite aligned enough for it to actually charge, but then it, I, so I just kind of, confirm that it is actually charging before i go to sleep now that is one thing to keep in mind lily you were talking about like getting a pop socket for your phone is uh pop sockets do make it a bit more challenging depending on where you put them on the back of the phone uh, to get wireless charging to work i mean yeah i don't think that i'm gonna be getting like a wireless charging pad anytime Mm -hmm. soon but i don't think that two of those are compatible unless there's some (laughs) case that supports pop socket i'm not sure or you put the pop socket way off the center of the phone or you just take off the case when you charge your phone right (laughs) that would make the most sense taking off the case yeah this super convenient wireless charging station just like toss it on the thing nope (laughs) i'm imagining some like otter box that has like six different components you have to take out before the phone's out of the case (laughs) that's what my dad has he has the one that can survive like being run over by a tank or whatever Uh yeah it's absurd yep yep yeah I prefer to just, you know, carry my phone around inside a Nalgene water bottle. <laughs> what? That's going to get banged Nalgene's around, though. indestructible. What? <laughs> so, how about those cameras? <laughs> I'm just thinking of the one we took with, like, you in the studio lighting on Portrait. Oh, yeah? Which looks ridiculous. You know what? I, th- I think we need to make this into a tradition because uh, a couple of years ago when I think it was the iPhone 7 came out, <laughs> we, Evan and I took some awful Wait, pictures of me right. in the studio lighting. Yeah. Okay. 
it's a so this is a a a like well lit at least on phone through webcam to google hangouts looks like a very well lit but it's like ian just making the derpiest face just kind of like <laughs> his mouth open a little bit making some shape with his lips just like you were probably please, talking please look in the show notes i'm gonna embed it in there um yeah <laughs> this one's nice oh and i took a live one too that was pretty good yeah but the camera is insane like i keep just like snapping pictures of people in portrait because i'm like it looks so cool <laughs> um but yeah the reverse camera is fine by reverse camera you mean the front facing one yeah okay front what okay. like it's facing towards you yeah yeah i'm just not sure if like the the hip people will call it a selfie camera yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, so um, actually, that's one of the yeah. gates that we need to talk about. Uh, I heard about Beauty Gate, which, from what I gather, is literally just like people are surprised that the front-facing camera does a lot more softening than like iPhones have typically done in the past. Um, I don't think that it's like a like a bug or anything. I just I think that like Apple changed. Yeah, that was definitely yeah. intentional. Yeah, um, I think it it wasn't you know done to make people's faces look a little smoother it, it's a a side You're effect ugly. of <laughs> the the extra denoising that happens mm-hmm. so the the iphone 10s camera um takes pictures that are a um i think one step uh shorter f- exposure at a uh at a lower iso so each photo just out of the gate will have a little more grain to it but it takes with the smart hdr feature it takes more series of HDR photos and then stitches those together. Mm -hmm. Now the result of that is that um, you'll get more levels of exposure for all the different um, areas of brightness and darkness in your photo. But to stitch those all together, you lose a little bit of quality and that's where it gets just a little smoothed over because it's no longer um, HDR in the past worked like you take one and there'd be one frame with it a little higher and one frame with a little bit lower and it would stitch those together. Oh yeah. And so now it's, you know, seven or 11 or some probably prime number of ridiculously high number (laughs) specifically a prime number um so that's just kind of a result of it but on the other hand pictures that you take um look almost like a fake amount of light are in them because you see this person that's sitting in the sun and you can kind of see still the detail in their face without it overexposing Mm -hmm. and you look behind them and like the sun is is shining on some building that isn't a white wall it, it has detail in it still um and then like say there's some shade under a tree that's perfectly exposed as well you know it's just mm-hmm. kind of a, an unreal photo that a traditional like dslr could not take yeah so this is something that is happening both on the front facing and the back facing cameras is that correct yep that i believe it these maybe a little more quality in the in the rear facing camera okay it's okay. it is a better sensor and better camera yeah and it has like optical image stabilization and other things but and we and we still have the dual cameras. One of them being the telephoto sensor, right? Yep, uh, twice the resolution. I used that for like the first time at a concert on Monday, um, and it was really cool to to kind of like zoom over everyone who was standing in front of me, and I got a better shot of mm-hmm. the group on stage. I don't know if it made it for my one second of video or not, but it was sure a contender. <laughs> I was thinking about that when I went to see Five Seconds of the Summer at the Armory, and it was only it was September 9th, so it was like just barely two weeks before i got this phone <laughs> and i was like Ugh, if only like you know i'm going to another show tomorrow night so i'll definitely be using it with telephoto there too yeah yeah brian the uh the partier of the nexus i came from the seven so like uh portrait mode has been out for a year but i'm first or yeah, first getting it now i used it a little bit at a cousin's wedding in august on my uncle's phone and it turned out some really nice camera or really nice photos so I've used it a bit. Um, I'm going to Colorado with my family in about a week. And so I'm really excited to use it there in the mountains more and when hiking around um, and just being with more groups of photo in like a vacation setting. Um, I take away more photos then than I do normally day to day. So I'm just excited to have like a, a good reason to go use the camera because I've heard g- great things online and I've enjoyed the photos I've taken. I just I don't hang out with people taking photos super often. <laughs> Right. I was like sitting at work and I was testing out portrait mode and my boss was like sitting across from me and I was like, and he was like, are you snapping a selfie? And I was like, no, I 
was using portrait mode and then he looked at the picture he was like holy shit send that to me that's really good <laughs> like, all right all right let's talk about the uh specs so we've got uh the cpu what, what are we on like the a9 now bionic something or other the a12 bionic a12. which is Jesus. three behind similar name to the a11 bionic from the iphone 10 and 8 um so this this cpu apple said was um i believe it's like 15 percent faster but um, in reality, I think a lot of it is almost 40% faster. Um, there's an, um, a non tech, um, review that kind of goes into some more specifics about that processor. Um, the processor, it has, um, two vortex cores at two and a half gigahertz and four tempest cores at 1.6 gigahertz. Um, and these smaller cores are the same ones that are found in the Apple watch series four fun fact, which is about as fast as an iPhone six S. So Think about that. And an iPhone 6S is roughly in, in line with the raw performance of any modern Android phone. So. Yeah. I know. Mm-hmm. And the uh, what what the the 10s now are like roughly on par with like a MacBook Air or whatever, something ridiculous like that. Yeah. Um. I I did a Geekbench um comparison of the um devices I own. Now, um, let me pull that up and. So the 10s Max got a single core score of 4789 and a multi score core of 1122 sorry 11223 um and my MacBook Pro that I'm using right now which is a 2012 um with the processor upgrade the 15 inch it has a single score single core score of 3836 so the 10s max is almost a thousand points faster in single oh, core performance <laughs> um and in multi-core the macbook pro is uh on a roughly 1500 points faster but that's because it has four cores with hyper threading versus the iphone's right. six cores so that's kind of understandable mm-hmm. yeah but that it's that close i think yeah it, it's really pretty telling how much ram are we rocking in these things uh four gigabytes in the 10s max i think three in the 10s maybe i'm wrong though uh i would have to look that up some other time Uh, apple doesn't of course tell you how much ram there is in a phone but i think the 10s max has at least has four though which is a first for a iphone i believe um now i just want to compare this to the iphone 7 because that's what i was coming from i remember when i got the iphone 7 i'm like wow this thing is fast and that has a single core uh, performance of 3400 and a multi-core of like 5600 um so it's this thing is i don't know over double the speed of my iphone 7 i'm replacing in multi-core and i don't know roughly 25 percent faster in single core but that's in the browser spec you know in real world it can be vastly different than that yeah yeah it looks like um both of these have four gigabytes of ram awesome yep nice Maybe it's the 10R that has three. Mm. Uh, probably. I could be. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, also, um, this processor has some other unique things that kind of came out um, a, a week ago or so. Um, so it's the first processor to support ARM's new 8.3 instruction set, um, also known as ARM 64E. Um, and this adds new, um, like a, a float floating point number to integer number instruction um, that handles... Um, out of range exceptions and other errors in a way that is the same way that JavaScript works. And so that mm. means that the iPhone XS is one of the fastest devices that runs JavaScript like ever. That's funny. So the, the browser benchmarks of the iPhone is truly crazy. Uh, I think it's right on par with like the iMac Pro or something. So like nice. everybody should make their mobile apps using React Native now, right? Which would be fine. Uh, well, that I think that runs native code. It's yeah, not probably quite compiles runtime. Yeah, this yeah. little yeah. But um, you can make some crazy websites that'll look awesome on an iPhone and just crawl and break on your Android device. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the uh, the physical, like the how it looks and feels. Um, so beautiful. I'd, I'd like to talk about some of the numbers first, because. Um, since we've got all these phones that have like wildly different amounts of bezel on the front of their the face, you know, the like just talking about the um, screen size is not super helpful anymore. 
Um, so I prefer to talk about the, the physical footprint. Um, so for the 10S, we have uh, it's 143.6 millimeters by 70.9 millimeters. And then the 10S Max is 157.5 millimeters by 77.4 millimeters. Um, and I, I mean, I, I compare these two phones that I've had in the past. Um, the 10S is basically the same size as like the Pixel 2, um, and the 10S Max is about the same size. I think a little bit bigger than like the the Pixel 2 XL. Um, it's so. a hair smaller than the Note 9. Mm-hmm. in terms of physical dimensions yeah um so so like obviously if if you dear listener have had different phones than i have <laughs> uh, go go and look up like the physical footprint of your phone to get a sense of like how do these compare to the size of your phone um and also just keep in mind the the 10s is the same exact size as the 10 and mm-hmm. the 10s max is the same exact size as the plus model from the 6 plus um forward yeah uh, now, but, um, but like, yeah, in, in general, these two follow the same kind of footprint sizes of your typical, like, standard size phone and then a plus sized phone. Yeah. Um, now, fun fact, since um, the iPhone 6 was Apple's thinnest phone, since the iPhone 6, every subsequent phone has been the same thickness or thicker. Yeah. I think the 6S Which is, is even, like, a little bit thicker, like, maybe t- two millimeters or... Something like that, but I doubt probably point two millimeters. Or, it's like right, tiny. Yeah. It's tiny right. fractions, but a difference between the six and the six S is they went from that series seven thousand aluminum to a series eight thousand, which is much stronger uh, because of uh, bend gate with the iPhone six. Ah, uh, yep. <laughs> and we've got a couple so, of gates to talk about this year too. No, nothing that's impacted me. I'm looking the other way. Um, <laughs> as as for weight, um, these phones are 177 grams versus 208 grams, so. Um, that iPhone XS Max, I think, is probably the heaviest iPhone ever made. But, you know, seems fine to me. Got my <laughs> glass front and back. Brian I'm, I'm happy. going to complain. <laughs> I mean, if you can, like, throw it in an attacker's head and use it as a, a weapon, then, you know, it's heavy enough for you. Right, yeah. Brian? I can throw it into a river and it'll be fine. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> Um, That's yeah, the same thing. I, I will say that, like, holding the 10s uh, versus the Pixel 2 here, like, it, it is noticeably denser, uh, even though they're, they're, like, the same physical size. It's it's a bit heavier than the uh, than the Pixel 2. So I remember just really liking... So I remember comparing the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 5. The iPhone 4 feel like a brick compared to the 5. Now, these yeah, are, like, ancient phones. All but... glass, right? And then the 5... The five had a little bit of glass in the top and the bottom of the back, but yeah, it was more aluminum. It was yeah. a little, it was, it was much thinner than the iPhone four. Um, yep. and it was, but it was taller too. So it, it, it was larger, but lighter, I think, or at least it felt lighter because it was so much taller. I would think so. But yeah, I like every time I put it in my pocket, I'm like, Oh, there's definitely something there. And like <laughs> in high school, before I got the success, I had an iPod touch fourth fourth generation gener- oh my god fourth gen and then like this little um slide phone you know an lg with like you push it up and it has a full keyboard oh, yeah. instead of the press each number four times um yeah and i used to carry both of those around in the <laughs> same pocket and i was like wow this is the same <laughs> except it's all on one device now i just realized looking looking at the uh wikipedia article for the pixel 2 that um the iPhone XS over there, the regular sized one, is actually a little bit heavier than the Pixel 2 XL, which is, yeah, that's, wow. pretty, that's pretty intense. Yeah. Yeah. It's the glass. <laughs> now, I'll say, from my perspective, the Pixel phones seem to seem flimsy and cheap. You need <laughs> sure. some weight in there. Sure. That's that's your They that's should be like Beats, Beats headphones and just He's literally not. put metal in the, in the plastic just to weigh it down so it feels more expensive. <laughs> no, yeah. I, it makes it feel luxurious. Say that to me when you, you know, drop your phone on your face while laying on your back in your bed. I don't do that. I said that. I forget where I said that. I said that to someone at some point about this phone. <laughs> Gosh, where was that? I don't know if it was on a podcast in real life or on a tweet. <sighs> right, because podcasts are not real or life. <laughs> maybe it was in Slack. I don't remember. Yeah, podcasts. Do we exist right now? 
<laughs> you have entered the podcast zone. I mean, Ian just wants to shed his physical form, so. I really do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You are the Nexus. Like when we go to the <laughs> oh website, God. you're like you're like p- piecing together that templating oh. engine by hand, literally. <laughs> I hand deliver all the packets. Yeah. Oh no! Uh-huh. <laughs> all right, how's that battery life on these phones? It lasts. Forever. I am blown away. So I came from the seven. I got a new battery this spring. I think it was in May. And that, that helped a bit, but it wasn't like extremely noticeable. It lasted a bit longer, um, but I would still usually charge it a second time most days. So usually when I'm driving home from work or something. Mm-hmm. I left work a week or two ago and I had 86% battery left. That's like never happened. Now I will say I woke up a little late and I didn't use my phone too much in the morning. And I, but I did, you know, read Twitter for probably 15, 20 minutes at work throughout the day and at lunch. So I was using it. I was listening to music and podcasts, both directions going to and from work. And I think I I lasted two full days on that. Now I went to bed the next day at 1% battery, but it still lasted that whole time. I've never had that happen. Like I've literally never gone two whole days on one charge Mm. with a phone before. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. I don't think there's only been one time where I've been below maybe like 20 or 15% before going to bed and like mm-hmm. using it the whole day and that was when i was intentionally trying to run it down <laughs> to see how long it would take to restart after you plug it in um which is less than three minutes mm. wow it's like that's two pretty good three which but is what, what charger were you plugged into um just into the one that the came in the box brick. yeah the five watt okay mm-hmm. so if apple supports fast charging on the 29 or 30 watt chargers that they sell with the 12 inch macbook so if you buy that and the USB-C to lightning adapter, um, you can charge the iPhones at like a super max at a super fast speed. Um, oh, yeah, I'm not sure you, exactly how fast you that have is, a but... USB-C to, to lightning cord somewhere around yeah, here, I right? Do. Yeah. So you could you could probably plug that into the MacBook Pro's brick and mm-hmm. see what it does. Yeah. Try that out because it should charge much faster. Yeah. I'm I'm still waiting for the day where we have a phone that can last like a full day with me like using google maps navigation strava recording zombies run recording and podcast playing for you know half an hour each way to and from work uh it's (laughs) man i'm really hard on on phone batteries (laughs) car batteries exist for a reason um strap that on your bike yeah, okay sure remember yeah. remember the more weight the more luxurious your bike is going to become oh the next best thing <laughs> <laughs> oh man um no like i i have seen on like anchor's website right they have um advertised like what looks very similar to a phone mount for your handlebars but it's literally for holding like a giant twenty thousand milliamp hour like That's anchor hilarious. external battery <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> yeah yeah I'm waiting for a phone case that looks like the 1980s cell phones, but it's just a battery case for your phone. But they make it look like it's an old phone. But Mm. in reality, it's just like 100,000 milliamp hours of (laughs) external battery storage for your phone. (laughs) Yeah, I think the thing that most impressed me and when I realized like how intense the battery was, um, we had to watch a 48 minute long like music video type thing for one of my classes. Mm -hmm. But um. I was on data and I was on a bus going through downtown and I was streaming that for about half an hour and the battery only went down four or five percent. And I was like, what? That's pretty good. My phone should be dead. Like, what's going on? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. No, I think it's I'm blown away at the battery performance. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Ryan these days. All right. So what kinds of uh, hmm, ports do we have on these phones? A USB-C one. What? Oh, no, wait, not yet. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would be I'm amazing. So not yet, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm a little tired. Oh, wow. Wait, wait, um, wait, wait. It's wait, a lightning wait. port. Brian, are you, in the sa- are, you, are you in the USB-C camp with me? I mean, it, it's it got a lot of flaws about the whole spec, but it would be nice to have some universal thing. Yeah. Now, that being said, USB-C is a larger port than lightning. The lightning connector fits yeah, inside of a USB-C connector. Mm-hmm. like like each you can fit the two cords that you plug into your phone inside of each other you should try it out it's <laughs> it's like i just mean like USB C is much smaller than other usb but it's it's still 
a little large. And I think, you know, the iPhone would be fine with it. They could make it work. Yeah, there's I mean, extra every, space everybody around else, this, All but... the other phones are making it work, so. Yeah. All the other Someday. I, I do think someday. The, the next iPad Pro is rumored to have it. We'll see. How about those speakers? I know, did they introduce it last year where they had, like, both the top and the bottom speakers? Uh, I think that was two years ago two with years the ago. iPhone 7. Okay, yeah. And they've continued that since then, correct? Yep. Uh, the speakers are larger and louder. I, I've i tried with louder. I, I still feel like the, the part where you usually listen to on a phone call is mm-hmm. never as loud as the bottom, mm-hmm. which makes sense. I don't know. I haven't done extensive testing this year. I don't know. I feel like I hear more out of the earpiece than the actual speakers on the bottom. I don't know. Mm. It's mm. strange. Maybe it just gives that illusion because that's facing upwards and the speakers are coming technically out of the bottom. So if it's laying flat on a surface face up, okay, then yeah, that could be. Yeah. And unlike it, the it, HomePod, I don't think it can sense like what's around it in order to modulate, no. you know, what's coming out of no. each of the different speakers. <laughs> no. Now the rotation orientation of your phone might um, influence it too. So if it's in landscape or vertical while playing a video or something, mm-hmm. that might uh, that might affect how it does the stereo. Um, I know it, that's at least the case for the iPad Pros because they have four speakers, and so it switches which two are left and right. Depending on the orientation, I think it would be really cool to have you know dual front-facing speakers, um, but of course that would eat into the bezel at the bottom of the phone. We don't want speaker notches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the the Pixel Three that just came out, like the smaller size, doesn't have any notches on it, but it still has front-facing dual front-facing speakers, and like the bezels are, I think, reasonably small. Um, okay, I just had an idea. So hmm. hold your phone horizontally. And then, like, put your thumbs a bit in the center on the side. Now, imagine if wherever your thumbs are, there are not there are notches there to hold stuff, and then also have spots for, so your thumbs could be on the screen without <laughs> having to <laughs> cover up the screen. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, sounds pretty terrible. <laughs> Just a large on the um, realm of the 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 Pixel Three XL's very large notch. Yeah, yeah. I did just switch mine today. There's this like hack in quotes where in settings you go to music and um let's see go to eq and if you change it from nothing to late night nothing changes except the volume like when you have it at any volume it'll be 30 percent louder than if you were to not have the eq in oh what? Hmm. i forgot about that until today but i had it on my late success. night yeah so if you are playing a song and you go into settings and turn that on, you'll notice it gets significantly so it, louder. It, it does a, so it does a flat EQ, but bumped like three or six dB higher or something like that? It's weird that they call sure. it late night because I should think that like late at night, I want to have it quieter okay. than usual. I think late night in the party context, which we oh know my, you aren't a part of. Oh but my like, God. Oh my God. Nightlife. God. I... I can't believe Ian, that, that didn't someday. even it didn't even yeah. occur to me that like oh yeah people like to have more energy at night. I forgot about that. <laughs> you forgot that people don't sleep from like eight p.m. to five a.m. Dude, I can't wait until my wedding reception, which starts at seven p.m., and I'm gonna be like asleep by nine p.m. Yeah, no, you'll just be that's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. No, it's oh man, it's gonna be such a rough night for me. What's our button layout like on this phone? Because, I mean, it, we don't have the home button, so is it exactly the same as what the 10s was last year? This is the 10s. Sorry, what the 10 was last year? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I I don't remember how the 10 looked, but the, the power button is at least taller than it was on the 7. Mm. So on the side, I think that's the same as the 10 last year. So it's new to me, at we least. We have power button over on the right hand side and then on the left hand side we've got a couple of volume buttons and above that we have the like twice as big the um the silence switch or whatever they call it on ios yep ringer ringer ringer, ringer. that's a ringer <laughs> um so yeah it's the kind of the standard buttons um uh, minus the home button but it hasn't been a button since the 6s so what what's a button anyway yeah, these days true. How about the uh, software experience? Um, obviously, this is the latest iPhone, so it comes with the latest. What are we at? iOS twelve, 12 now. Yeah. Twelve point yeah. zero point one. Oh. Is hmm? Is it just a coincidence that you know the processor number A twelve lines up with the uh, iOS number? That's hmm. 
I just realized that, Ian. I just realized that right now. That makes so much sense. Um. So, <laughs> do, does anybody know? Like, has Apple promised updates for this phone for X number of years? No, but if it's in line with what the iPhone 5s is at, it should run the latest version of iOS for the next five years. Yeah. No, Good. six years. Fantastic. Well, and they so were the really iPhone. Adamant about that. Like during the event, they were talking about keeping phones up to date just because of the amount of waste that they produce when they're not up to date because mm-hmm. people, you know, want to be running the latest software and if they're not, why use the phone anymore is some people's logic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's part of their initiative. Man, to, like, I really wish that Android users green. would use that um, that Instagram. that reasoning. So when compared to Android, um, yeah, the iPhone 5S will, at the end of its software supported life, will have run the latest version for six years. Um, and so the, the difference in the iOS and Android ecosystems are that you know, since most iPhones can run the latest version of iOS, apps will usually require the current version minus one, maybe two OSs, um, where Android stuff is supported for many years back. Um, and so it's, I think iOS moves as a platform a lot faster because instead of people having to buy new phones to get the latest features, they just have to update the software on their phones. Now, yeah. there are some OS features that are hardware specific or locked to certain models for kind of, you know, soft hardware features but um it's you know the whole platform kind of moves together versus fragmented in the way that android does mm-hmm. yep. and that's great mm-hmm. yay apple security too that's a huge thing um i think the running the latest version makes your phone significantly more secure um and apple's done some crazy stuff with ios 12 and specifically with some of the hardware in iphone the iphone 10s that makes it really the the most secure phone by a long shot um i think they have um what was it like encrypted pointers or yeah signed signed pointers so how a computer addresses its memory in the hardware to the software is now kind of encrypted and obfuscated oh okay that sounds like a very important low level and that's yeah and that's on top of like um uh k-a-s-l-a-r something kernel address space randomization layer or something like that um where like the the memory pointers would kind of change per boot to be different um, at like a kernel level, and now you know this it that that was in like iOS five or something a long time ago. But um, so like that same kind of thing is now encrypted and a bunch of stuff I don't really understand. But follow Infosec people on Twitter; it's the best community. Go do it, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound like an insular community in any way. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, I think the worst thing I've experienced is like apps themselves not being up to date with iOS twelve. Mm. Um, there's one app specifically on my phone that like I can use it for two or three days and then if I try to open it, it just crashes continuously. So I have to delete and re-download because they haven't updated it for the software yet. Right. Um, so n- we've had this form factor with these, you know, new screen sizes, right? Screen dimensions, um, without the home button for a year now. Um, are you guys encountering any apps that like haven't been updated to support that yet like how does ios deal with those is it just like kind of show them like as a as a boxed version kind of similar to what you would do if you if you're opening an iphone app on an ipad yeah so it's it's boxed. so it looks like you're running it on an iphone 8 or something you know Mm -hmm. with the bar on the top and the bottom the exact same proportions as they were on the older iphones um now the iphone 10s max um remember has a different resolution that is new this year so if apps haven't mm. been updated to support the iPhone XS Max, it runs it at the iPhone X or XS resolution and scales it up. Mm. So something like currently today, I'm using Tweetbot. Everything in Tweetbot is a little bit larger, including like the keyboard. Um, I think Facebook Messenger is still hasn't been updated yet, um, but some apps have been. And so yeah, Facebook hasn't yet either, but some apps have been. And so you can kind of tell it suddenly gets, it's a little, just a little more sharper you see mm-hmm. on the XS Max. Um, and things are just a little smaller. Um, and so apps are, are updating for that. And it just reminds me of when um, the iPhone 4 was released with new retina display, when the iPhone 5 had become taller and the 6 was a new resolution. You could you could just see as time went on, more and more apps were updated and things weren't being scaled as often. Right. That's, and that's one thing that I've always found bizarre about the way that like iOS deals with different resolutions and different um, screen sizes. Because like on on the Android side, everything has to be 
you know coded to just like use whatever screen size whatever resolution is currently present right and so like the elements like all you know they're, they're always being presented at whatever resolution your current screen has uh and then they just you know it, it's similar to like a web page just kind of you know laying out things according to where it fits on the current screen um and i think the the methodology there is a lot of apps do use auto layout and size classes to to lay out dynamically in that kind of way and that was added in ios 6 i think mm -hmm. quite a while ago um you know before that you hard code with pixels and things that's kind of gross yeah um, when you have such a variety now you definitely want it to be auto laid out um however i, I don't think apple enables that for all apps because they want to make sure the app is going to work well for that device. Maybe the developer has done some hacky stuff that is per device. They do a hack to make it look right. They don't want to enable something that would break an app for a lot of the customers. It's better to just scale it so it works and is functional than to break an experience. Um, furthermore, I think there are things like launch images and there's some optimization and performance tuning that you get when you know exactly what kind of device you can compile for. So there are slightly different variations that might be included in their compiling that help performance on each device mm -hmm. just a hunch i don't know i don't i'm not really an ios developer i've dabbled you're closer to being an ios developer than either of us so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i suppose that's fair um all right guys you got any final thoughts for me the stainless steel band around it is just awesome it just it's so grippy and and i love it are you Brian, are you rocking yours without a without a case? Saddle brown leather case. Okay. Just oh, like yeah. when I had my iPhone yeah. 6. I had a, a product red one on my iPhone 7, and I went back to gray, or back to brown here. I, though I kind of wish I went blue, just to mix it up. Get a little wild. <laughs> maybe maybe the next one. <laughs> um. Yeah. The biggest thing I worry about, like, before I put a case on it, just barely a week ago, is dropping it and shattering it. So you, because... you had it for a while without a case? Yeah. Well, because um, I don't really tend to buy cases from Apple because I think they're ridiculously overpriced. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, all the ones on Amazon are technically for, it says, you know, for iPhone ten slash XS, but if it's fitted around the camera enough, it'll make a difference because the XS camera bump is a little bigger. It's like, 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 a, like a hair. Yeah, it's so yeah, little, but it, but it, it is it, enough. There are cases on there that, you know, you see the reviews like, it doesn't fit my XS, it's too big. The camera bump's too big. It's, mm. like, falling apart, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh. So I waited a little bit, and then I got one from Spigen, maybe, and it's yep. just, like, a softer yeah. one, so I figured that would fit. But, like, yeah. Yeah, and then there was there was the alarm glitch where, like, if you had it t set to any of the, um, I don't know, preloaded alarm sounds and you changed an alarm to be that sound, the sound would come out when the alarm went off. But... If I set it to any songs for my library, it would still go to the default alarm sound. But I think mm. the problem was that I didn't have them downloaded on the phone. Mm. And you have you've since figured that out, right? Yeah, it works now. Yeah, it was just yeah, it was just a matter of downloading the songs physically. That's giving me throwback phone. memories to when I did used to use songs to wake up to, but now I like can't listen to those songs because. It woke me up every day for too long. No, yeah. I just have one for um, the birth control pill that I take every day. But, like, in the morning, I have the little sleep cycle app that tracks when you're in the lightest part of the room cycle mm -hmm. and everything. And it has, like, a chiny sound. Yeah. It's very pleasant Soothing. to wake up yeah. to. Yeah. I use, I think, the default bedtime sound that they play. Oh, yeah. And the bedtime feature, the alarm or clock app. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I did notice on the back, too... They got rid of, like, all the, like, it doesn't say iPhone XS, it just says iPhone. And, you know, hmm. it doesn't have designed by Apple in California, assembled in China, hmm. model, whatever, whatever. It just plainly says iPhone and nothing else. Hmm. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny Clean Ives. and simple. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if I wonder if Johnny Ives had anything to do with, like, you know, the uh, extra camera smoothing, like... Yes, your face must be more smooth. You're so beautiful. <laughs> we got to get rid of all of those rough edges. He's British, right? Sure, or Australian or something. I think he's British. He, he's, if he's, he's Australian, British. I couldn't stand to watch the video. He's very, he's very exotic. I pulled up his uh, page right now. Apple.com slash leadership slash Jonathan hyphen Ive um, with uh, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N. Uh -huh. um, I don't think it says where he's from. 
but he holds over 5,000 patents. Damn. He's a native of London. Sir Jonathan Ive has been made a knight uh, <laughs> commander of the British Empire in 2013 sir. for services to design and enterprise. Amazing. So, Lily and Brian, where can people find you guys on the internet? You can find me on the internet on Twitter at Brian Mitch L or my website, BrianM.me, where I will probably pretty soon be posting a review of the iPhone XS Max, though you just heard a lot of it now. So, uh, <laughs> read up on there it'll probably be a little more technical at least in some ways uh i'll probably skip over some things we talked about here who knows i haven't written it yet only time will tell <laughs> exactly <laughs> um yeah and i guess i'm on twitter as lilieve 64 which is always just so fun to say out, out loud um yeah and, and twitter super easy and... to, to spell based on hearing the name yeah i mean it's phonetically spelled um there and instagram and then i guess if you're really out there, Facebook, Lily Buyer, but who uses Facebook? I don't know. I'm, a, I'm on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Probably none of our listeners because we do a really bad job of uh, promoting this show on, on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. But it is on Facebook. Yes. It's so there. that's something. You have a page. Yes. Uh, and I am Ian Arbuck. You can find me on Twitter or Mastodon as Ian Arbuck. Um, I'm on the Mastodon.cloud instance over there. This episode is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any part of it as long as you link back to our original page, which is thenexus.tv slash SO51. If you would like to discuss this episode with other listeners, you can go to our subreddit at r slash thenexustv. And if you would like to help support us financially as we continue to make tech-focused podcasts, uh, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash TV. And remember that no matter where you're listening, you should definitely subscribe to Second Opinion Reviews in your favorite podcast player to get all of the latest new episodes. Until next time, have a good one. Have a good one. Bye. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence. Tech news is dominated by big announcements with big bombastic personalities. Developers, 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 developers. Sometimes they make us laugh. Yes, I'd like to order four thousand lattes to go, please. Sometimes we laugh at them. Courage. Sometimes we're filled with awe. There it is. Whoa! Check that out. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes they throw shade. Toxic hell stew. Sometimes they inspire. Live, learn, and love. They never want us to forget. Remember that the show's never over, because I got one more thing. Now, it's often difficult to make the journey to see these events live. This is a freaking dirt road! Oh my god! <laughs> but we here at the Nexus TV have got you covered. On our show, Nexus Special, we recap and analyze all the biggest announcements and keynote events in the tech world. So come join us as we explore the brave new worlds that await us. Subscribe to Nexus Special in your favorite podcast player today.